Hi everybody, Kev here. We're back with another tutorial, this time on the basics of Git. So grab your computer and follow along. Before we dive in and do a demo of Git, let's take a look at what Git is. So according to the Git manual page, Git is a fast, scalable, distributed version control system with the unusually rich command set that provides both high-level operations and full access to internals. In simple terms, Git is a collaboration tool. Teams use it because it has tools like history tracking and revision tracking that let them work together at the same time on a project without bumping into each other. You might be wondering who uses Git, or you might not be wondering who uses Git because you know that everyone uses Git. Every project I've been on since college has used Git. It's basically ubiquitous in the software engineering space for collaboration and revision tracking. It's extremely valuable for team collaboration. So if you wanna follow along with me at home, that's great. You're gonna need a couple of tools that I'll show right now, but I recommend first just watching this video all the way through and then getting a good sense of, at a high level, what Git is really doing for us before you go back and try to follow along step-by-step step and then feel free to pause the video uh, and, and follow along. Before moving on, make sure that you have Git installed. Windows users, I'll put the link to Git Bash in the description for this video. Mac, you should already have it installed on your operating system. Most Linux distributions also come with Git out of the box. So open up your terminal and try and type git dash dash version. And if yours responds with the version number, then you're good to go. So I'm gonna to go to a sample folder that I've got with some code in it that I wanna keep track of the changes for. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is tell git that I wanna track changes in this folder. And I do that by doing git init and it will immediately initialize an empty repository, which just means that it's going to start tracking changes for everything in this folder. Now I can check the status of my Git repository by typing Git status. And that's gonna tell me that I have no commits yet. It's not tracking anything. It tells me there I have untracked files in the source directory. You can see that I've got SRC in this folder and nothing is being tracked yet. So let's change that. Let's add a file to be tracked. And we do that by typing Git add. Now I could type one file, two files, or I could do the entire working directory, which is what I'm gonna do here by saying git add dot. That's adding every file to be staged for commit. So if we do a git status again, we will see that all of the files in this directory and any subdirectories are now staged for commit. You can see it says changes to be committed. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit those changes. Now that they're staged, I wanna commit those changes. And I do that by typing, git commit, and I'm gonna say dash M to pass a message for my commit or give it a commit message and just say initial commit. So what we've done here is we've created a checkpoint in time. That means that any time in the future, if we want to come back to this point where all of our files are just like they are right now, we can do that very easily. And so let's demonstrate that right now. Let's open up one of the files that we have controlled in our Git repository. So this is one of the files that's inside my source folder and it's just a Kotlin class. Don't worry if you don't recognize the syntax. So what we're going to do is make a simple change to this file. We're gonna go ahead and add a new test class. We're gonna save that. So now if we go back over to our terminal, we can check and see the status of our Git repository. Have there been any changes since our last commit? Yes, there have. There's one file, the dbtitlematch.kt file, which is what I just modified over here. So let's go ahead and add a commit, just like we did before. We'll add. We can type this entire file name out if we want to, or we can use some tab autocomplete magic and let the terminal do the work for us. Models db title match. So we go ahead and add that to our staging. We can do another git status. We can see that that change has been added and it's going to be committed with the next commit. So we'll do a commit. We'll do a test commit. We hit enter. We've just created another checkpoint. But now let's say that we wanna go back in time. We're done with this change. We don't think it's right. We wanna go back to our initial point, our initial checkpoint. Well, we can do that by checking out our earlier commit. So first we need to do something called a git log. And that's gonna tell us all of the different commits that are on this repository. We can see that our first commit down here, initial commit, uh, that's my name and the date. And we can see our second commit is right above it. But what we want is the information from this commit. So all we need is this big commit hash right here. Let's just copy it. And we type git checkout 
and the commit hash. And as soon as we hit enter, you'll notice that the code on the left disappears and goes back to the way it was. So we've just checked out back to our checkpoint from at the very beginning of this demo, and it's like nothing has ever happened yet. Now there's a couple of reasons that you might want to check out an earlier revision. We might want to push this code back up to overwrite the changes that we've made. There are a couple of different more advanced ways to do that because maybe we're unhappy with any code we've created after this checkpoint. Another reason that I frequently will check out an earlier revision is because I'm running tests and my tests are failing for some reason and I don't know why. I will check out an earlier commit of my code to a commit and I'll run tests on each earlier commit until they start passing again. And that tells me where that break happened in the commit chain. And I, I know this commit had passing tests and this commit had failing tests. So I can kind of look at what has changed between those two commits to figure out why my test started breaking. Well, for this next part, we're going to push our code up to a remote repository. But before we do that, let's get back onto our master branch head, which is with that second commit that we did. Right now we're in kind of a detached head state, it's called, when we check out an earlier commit. And we can make that decision, do we want to overwrite our changes with this old checkout? Or do we want to just go back to the future, essentially? So I'm gonna go back to the future. So I'm gonna type git checkout master. And I'm sure you noticed that that second commit is back on the chain. We can verify by doing a git log. We see that commit is back on top and we see that our code on the left has come back. So for this next part, I'm going to assume that you have a GitHub account or a Bitbucket account or GitLab account or some account on a website that lets you create uh, repositories. I'm gonna go ahead and create a repository on GitHub very quickly. Uh, not doing a tutorial for that right now, but it's pretty easy. Just cl click a new button on your profile on GitHub. I'm calling it Git Demo, Demo for Git. I'm not initializing it with any code and you just hit Create Repository. What's important here is that you write down or copy the origin URL and that's what's important because what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be storing our code that we've been keeping on our local computer in the cloud in a remote repository. So we do that by adding a remote origin, which is just a pointer to somewhere else that our Git code is stored and our changes are tracked. So we do that by typing git remote add origin. So we're saying we're going to add a new remote origin to this repository. And this is where we paste that URL that you got from whatever repository you just created. That's, all, that's empty. And then once you hit enter, your local repository now has an origin remote set to that URL, and we can push to that now. So let's go ahead and push our code from our local computer to that remote repository. And we do that using the git push command. So we'll type git push. We say origin because that's where we wanna to push to. And then it asks, what branch do we wanna push? And we haven't talked about branching, but just know that unless you do anything custom, the branch is called master that all of your code is being stored on. That's the master branch. We're going to talk about branching momentarily, but for now, just know that you only have one branch, the master branch. So go ahead and git push origin master. That's going to take all your code, push it up to whatever remote URL you set. You can see that it pushed it up to a new remote branch master. We can look at our repository when we refresh it and we'll see that our source files are now in the repository. So I just alluded to this a little bit, but let's talk about branches. So let's say that you're not the only developer of your code and you have two people working on features at the same time. You both might need to modify the same file and you can run into a lot of trouble if you both try and push changes to the same file to your repository. So we use this feature called branching. So let's go over that now. So open up your terminal and type git branch. And that's gonna tell you what branch you're currently on. And there should only be one master. But both you and your coworker are trying to write a feature. So what you'll do is you're going to check out a new branch. And you do that by doing git checkout dash B. And I'll say feature one. So I'm developing feature one and my coworker is developing feature two. So I can type git branch again to verify. Yes, I'm on the feature one branch. Let's go back over to our sample code. And I'm gonna add another class. I'll call it test feature one, and I'll save it. We go back to our terminal, we type git status, and it tells us if there's been any changes since the last commit. And of course there are, we just added a new class. And so I'm developing feature one, and I think that this is the end of my feature. 
That was a really short feature, but I'm done with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a commit. How do we do that again? We add the files to be staged, get add, and then I'm gonna say dot for current working directory, every file in there. I'm gonna do status again. I uh, Yes, I see that my one file I've changed has been staged. So I'll go ahead and commit it and say feature one commit. Now, as we've seen, the feature one branch has my changes on it, but my coworker is working on their own branch. So let's go ahead and check out master and do a little time travel. So we're back on master. You can see that the feature on the left went away. And now let's turn into our coworker. So we're gonna check out another branch from master, we're calling it feature two. And let's say that your coworker also added a custom class, test feature two. So you both modify the same file. And in the end, you actually want both of your work. Maybe they aren't even related, but they still need to both be present in the same file. And you'll see why that's a problem momentarily. So what we wanna do first real quick is to commit this. So we're gonna add the same, do the same thing we did for the other feature. We're gonna get add the working directory and we'll commit it. Well, actually let's do a status first. That's always what we wanna do first to make sure we're only committing what we know. So we're gonna get commit dash M, we're gonna say feature two. And if we look at our git log, we'll see there's our new feature. There's our new commit in the chain. But what's gonna happen is when coworker two and yourself are both trying to push your feature into master, there's gonna be something called a merge conflict. So let's go over that now. Let's check out master. So we'll do a git branch. We're on master now. And let's say that you working on feature one finished your feature first. So you can do a merge. You can pull in the changes from feature one into master. So while you're on master, just type git merge feature one. That should be pretty simple. Now you can see that we've got our feature one code on master. And if we do a git log, we'll see an interesting new commit. It's a merge commit. We've got our merge of master and feature one into our master branch. And the commit message is the same commit that we did for the feature one branch. But now let's say that feature two has just been finished up by your coworker and they do the same thing. They log into master just like we are on and they type get merge feature two because they think their feature's done, they're good to go. So they hit enter and something interesting is gonna happen. Git is going to try to resolve the conflicts because you both have modified the same file and this is gonna happen a lot, trust me. But it won't be able to because you both modified the same file in roughly the same area. And so Git says, I'm not gonna try and resolve this on my own. I don't wanna mess up this file. So here are the changes from both commits, master and feature two. You resolve them. And you can see that much in the message here. Fix conflicts and then commit the result. Self-explanatory. So we look at our file and we can see that it tells us there's two versions of line 11, essentially. We've got test feature one and test feature two. And your use case might be different, but here we actually want both of these things. Both features are irrelevant. So the end result is we want both of these classes in our file. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove the git syntax, keep both features, save the file. And now we go back over to our terminal and we do a git status and it's gonna tell us that both branches modified the file in question. So we're going to add the file, source, main, Kotlin, com, Kevin Ellis, models, db title match. Now we've got our file ready to be committed get status, so we're gonna do a commit. And we actually don't need to do a message here because when you do a merge commit, git generates a commit message for you. So we just type git commit and a vim window pops up that tells us that it's a merge commit. So I'm not even gonna try and type into this. I'm just gonna do colon wq. I'm gonna save that commit message and let's do a git status. Nothing to commit, it's clean, do a git log. And you can see that our last commit is a merge commit resolving those conflicts. So I've been using Git for about seven years and I can tell you that I just showed you 90% 
of what I use on a day-to-day basis of Git. It's as simple as staging, committing, and checking out branches. And working together as a team revolves around resolving conflicts. That's pretty much all there is to Git. The last thing here that's left for me to do is to push up the new changes to my remote repository. I can't forget to do that. So we git push origin master. And now we can go check out our repository again. And we refresh. And we're going to see that more commits have appeared in the chain. My changes are going to show up as individual commits with their messages. And have little timestamps and SHAs that we can check out. That covers the basics of Git and its most important tools. If you want to learn more commands or tools you can use, check out the link below for the Git docs. Like and comment below if you enjoyed the video, and let me know what I can cover next. All right, see y'all next time.